This is what I was thinking, and you guys tell me what you think. I was thinking the 827 big bore in here. But the issue with doing that is that my tunnel, here, do I have a tape measure here? Yeah. This tunnel is 16 and a quarter inches wide. What is it on the rev? It's 16 and a half, right? Sixteen and three quarters. So it's a half inch smaller. Let me look at this here now. This tunnel is fourteen and a half inches. You following me? You following me? So everything on this little Articat here is narrower. So if I took this Elan, <clears throat> these are my thoughts anyway, is if I took this Elan and narrowed up this tunnel to 14 and a half inches, basically just cut out most of this tunnel, have a new one all bent up and um, built to the, uh, the proper length, 14 and a half inches wide, then I could use the Articat secondary clutch, the shafts, and I could put the 925 big bore in it. The good thing about the 925, that Articat 925, I've got it right here. Well, you can see with this, the, with this other motor, how is that ever dirty? Um, you can see where the exhaust comes out. You know, it comes, it basically comes out the top of the motor. So we could take that and it would solve a lot of problems. It would solve a lot of problems as far as uh, routing the exhaust. That's kind of what I was thinking. 925 in the Elan with the 174, 200, 215 horsepower. What do you do for a track? I'm using the one, I'll still use the 174 track, but I'll just cut down the sides on it. Yeah, so I'll cut it down to 13 and a half inches, All right? So, you know, the most applicable snowmobile at that point? And the ski stance on this center to center, 34 and a half? 35. 35. That would help me deal with a lot of the issues that I'm gonna have because. Now with a 925 and a 15 and a half inch wide track, are you not just gonna trench? Well, not when there's 174 inches of it. Everything trenches with a lot of power, but depends on the suspension you use. The, the, with this suspension here, that's like an anti-trenching suspension. It's coupled and it works really well. Um, but you know, if you put that motor in, I'm gonna mock it up a little later on. I can cut out all this steering stuff and just start over, but do it right. Um, you know, I can put the motor more up front, have everything, all the exhaust system come out up top, really put it wherever I want. You thinking, you feeling me? Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. 925? 174. 13, One's and, a half. 13 and a half wide. It's gonna be the Flickiest, best thing out there. I think sure. I think it'd be pretty flicky. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you thinking a wheelie? It's gonna be way different because uh, the track goes way up front. Yeah, but it won't when I'm done with it. Oh, you're gonna change. Well, I mean, it will still. The track. You're still gonna be standing on top of the track a lot more than. Yes, I'm gonna keep it up as much as I can, just because I just want to see. It, then it'll be a bit of a wheelie monster, but. Um, you still have to have that proper distance between your clutches, right? And you can't have your secondary clutch back where you're on your knee. No. That's over right. there. So everything still has to be up. And that's the problem we're running, I'll run into here. Um, they have to be like on top of each other. Yeah, that's kind of what I want to do. So I'm going to take, I'll take measurements from the, um, from the axis. 
and I want to see where they place their secondary in relation to their primary. So I want that same kind of, because uh, you know, there's a whole gy gy gyroscopic effect, right, when everything's spinning. So you got your track, and uh, you should hook that, rev hook that up on your, uh, your modeler there at work on the computer. Yeah. Can you do that? Can you do, uh, can you do uh, like, a, not a 3D anima an animation, but... Um, I can do like yeah. a 3D design of uh, the placement. Yeah, but can you do it so things are spinning to see what it would be like? Uh, uh, the gyroscopic, I don't have that. There's a packet you could buy for that, but I don't have that. Because that would be really cool. Um, but that, that's kind of my thought, right? <clears throat> so the more forward the engine goes, I, I kind of want the engine as far forward as I can get because then that gives me all my weight up front. We've got to have the weight up here yeah. because um, the further back it goes, then it really does that. I don't want it to do that too much. I mean, it looks good, but it's not very practical. But yeah, I need to cut the tunnel out. It'll have to be a taller tunnel. Then I'll have to place the motor down in here. But the primary still has to fit in. Let's just grab the uh, engine and stick it on there. It's just that one thing. There you go. Right. How's it going? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. it's gonna mess with it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a plug caught in there. Oh, Jesus. That's good. <clears throat> so, 13 and a half. I mean, it'll still come that way a little bit. Yeah, well, it's still gonna be forward more. A little bit more, I guess. Oh, yeah, we want it. It's going to have to come. Holy smokes. It's going to have to come right up to here. The carb's right up here. Change the steering design, maybe? Oh, yeah. Go hydraulic. Let's have it go lower in here. Well, that's what I'm thinking, right? So if I cut out this tunnel, cut that out, stick that motor down inside there. And have everything further back where the tunnel starts. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Well, that's what most that's what most chassis are like, right? They, yeah. They cut that tunnel that tunnel out so it fits in. So this whole belly pan would be lower. Yep. You could have it sitting right down in here. Just the um, yeah. And once it's down in there, this steering might not even really be get affected. Yeah. You know. Need room for the carbs. And this can be we can cut and twist this however we want. There's a windshield wiper motor on it. <laughs> Oiler. Get rid of that stuff. Interesting. You go over, but. Oh, so that's 15 and a half, and it's going to be down to 14 and a half but it'd be sort of equidistant. Yeah, so then it can go over. I mean, if we have to put a bit of a you know, out yeah, the side, then we have fine. to do that, right? Kind of like the Polaris <clears throat> has like a bulge. Yeah, a little bulge there. That'd be all right. I think it's going to be... The whole thing's going to be a lot lower. It's going to be better. And all we need to do is just uh, mock up a plate for the side to hold, mount everything in, right? Yep. Like I if, think it's if groovy. If we could point. cut out, out of an M chassis, just cut that section out and rivet it on. But the M, yeah. Or that thing. Or that just. Or that thing. Just cut that whole, uh, <laughs> cut that whole 440 chassis right apart. Just have the front section bolt on to the rear of that, or like solid rivets or something. Oh, we don't want to use all that Articat stuff on here. Yeah. <laughs> we got to make our own tunnel. It's got to be aluminum. I want steel. Is it steel? Yeah, those sides are steel. Oh, the sides are, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we'll have to check it. God, that's a beefy clutch. If you maybe want to put a comet, smaller comet on there. But 
well, they're not much smaller in the end. Yeah. No, I, I'll just I'll just cut it out how I have to. Yeah. Now that's not a 925 yet, is it? You no, it it's an 800. No, no, I just have to send that. I have to tear the motor apart, send the jug out. Is it two, twin cylinders? Oh, well, yes, it is. It's a little handier. Yeah, this um, the cylinders are going out to our K-Tech. He's going to 925 this monster motor. Because you can't really deny the power that comes out of some of these Articats. And, and the ability to make a lot more power out of them as well. That's what Kelsey said. Oh, Louie, you're going to love that. You're going to get addicted to that power. And I know having that, that boondocker turbo. It's just handy. It's, it's there when you need it. Yeah, the power is always there. This can always go higher, too, because you're probably going to want it higher. Um, well, there's a, there's a whole... Where's my hood? This whole space right here is just windshield. So I can technically cut this whole thing out right here and just block off this whole part of the windshield and just use that as engine space for electronics and whatever, yeah. that I, whatever I want, right? So it'll still tuck in there, and I need to get the exhaust in as well. In and out. What about taking the front end off the skidoo? Like, just the, the bracing for the handlebars and stuff? Like the... Like the, the, the whole front... The front skidoo. Yeah. The loop and the brace that comes down the front. I think that pretty much we could probably just build it ourselves. Like, that's yeah. pretty... That's, that's a, pretty straightforward. I think so. I mean, even uh, like even if you have to cut this out, just make something simpler, more forward, or because that might be in the way for the. Like I don't know if you want to keep this. <coughs> that has to be there. That has to be there. Just because if you build a loop, a different loop for the steering, that kind of. Well, I wanted the I wanted the steering to come out right here. The steering. Steering comes back here like this. I want it to come out. It's got to come up. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So if you took this out and made it into more of a loop that attached to the front too and came right over the motor, you could have it right at the front coming vertical almost. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we could probably scrap this and just use this. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fab. Start, first thing, I guess, is just going to be engine placement. And then work around it. And try to stuff everything else in it. Cut that whole, uh, cut that whole tunnel right out of it. Yeah. So that's where we're at with that. Now. RMK boards for it too, eh? I do have RMK boards. Yes. Would it not be cheaper to just have your buddy make a whole new tunnel again? Uh, well, that's what I, no. No, this is, there's a, there's a lot of work and energy and time into this right here. Yeah, no, no. No, I think uh, this, is, this is done perfect. I think that's, that's easy peasy. That's just a whiz, whiz cut. I think we're good there. Yeah, well, the hardest part with projects is everything takes a lot of time. Um, you know, just, you know, I wanted to be on this one already, but just the drivers for it, I just got them in about a week ago. So everything, everything gets held back. Um, and you start dealing with companies that have various parts, uh, little things that I'm thinking about trying to use on there. I'm putting that all together and they're embedded in snowmobile season and they don't have time to talk about projects. So what's gonna happen is, you know, I'll have a whole bunch of stuff uh, lined up for this and people are gonna be on board and then they're busy all summer and then they're gonna, then I'll start getting parts in September or October for it. I kind of know that's what'll happen. And that's just the way it goes. It's, Are you planning on having it done for the show? Oh, I think uh, there'll be definitely something there to mock, like mocked up and looking pretty good. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't really think that's that difficult. I, if, we, if we butcher that yeah, Articat, then most of the brain work is, is done. Like it's, it's all there. It's, everything's narrower. It all makes sense. What's the steering loop like on that? I do not want anything to do with that That's steering. Good. That's a horrible, horrible steering on there. <laughs> but who knows, maybe there's something I can use on it. So I'll probably part it out. Don't get too mad, Articat guys. 